words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. There's a sentence out of today's second reading that I can't seem to get out of my head. I keep rolling it around like a fisherman's friend, but it won't dissolve. And so that's where I'd like to go from today. This is from St. James' Epistle. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. What is this idea St. James is getting at about mirrors? In one respect, we are all like outward-facing mirrors. People can see a reflection of who we are just by looking at us. Concerning ourselves with the reflection other people see, and indeed changing that reflection to satisfy other people's expectations, leaves us with a false image of ourselves. I don't suppose you remember those awful TV shows where the presenters would take an ugly duckling of a person lead them into the studio dressing rooms, plaster them with makeup and brightly coloured clothes and present the new person as some wonder of self-expression. The truth was, those people were already perfectly fine just as they were. By conforming to someone else's expectations, in this case the advertisers of makeup and clothing companies, they lost their true image. I once had the enviable pleasure of giving a teenager driving lessons. Now, perhaps you were different during your own learner years, but teaching this teenager how to drive was like looking in a mirror, particularly in regard to how much concern he had for how other drivers thought of him. And I know that this concern about one's own image as a driver can persist into adulthood, have you ever seen someone speeding through an area well known for its speed traps? I used to wonder if those types of drivers just had plenty of money to spend on speeding fines. But I've since learnt out there are actually grown adults out there who care if people think they are a wuss when they drive their V8 too slowly. Consider this weight of pressure we have around us to conform to a certain image, to reflect an image that the world wants to see. Pressure from advertisers to dress a certain way, pressure to drive a certain way, so much pressure to conform. When we look into a mirror, there is an image that we should see reflected back to us somewhere buried underneath all that external pressure is the image of Christ. But can you see him looking back? We mustn't disregard the weight of pressure from within ourselves to look a certain way either. The world around us expects us to reflect a certain image, but we're just as capable of creating a facade ourselves of including things that we think reflect who we truly are, but are just optional add-ons at best. And the thing about optional add-ons is that they fail first while everything else keeps going. One of the great things about working in the valley is the opportunity for people watching. And I've noticed a certain funny behaviour amongst some people. If you walk up Ann Street, there is block after block of floor-to-ceiling windows. Some people just can't help themselves but use them as a mirror. And St. James's words seem to apply there as well. They walk up Ann Street admiring themselves in the reflection 
and then they look away and it seems like they immediately forget what they look like. So they keep looking back at themselves all the way up Ann Street. At that reflection they're seeing, this sort of reflection doesn't seem to stick. It doesn't last. We can look at ourselves in the mirror and see all sorts of things that we have built up for ourselves as our self-image. Some people define themselves by their career or a particular skill they have or how well they make their bathroom scales behave. But if you look into the mirror and that's all that you see, you turn away, immediately forgetting who you are. St James is telling us, look instead at what is actually permanent about yourself. Look at the image that is eternal and transcendent. Look for the image of Christ who gives us the law of liberty, liberty from worrying about having to create our own reflection, the liberty to be able to reflect the eternal word of God. Now, this image that we Christians reflect can be difficult to reconcile to ourselves. There's the image the world wants to see. There's the image that we try and create for ourselves. But God has given us a better image, the image of Christ. So when God sees us, what's the image that's being reflected back to heaven? Now, ultimately, I think we all desire greater holiness, greater righteousness, greater wisdom, greater knowledge of the love of God. The images of ourselves imposed by the world or fabricated by ourselves are never good enough. But the image that God sees within us is the image of Christ himself. And this is the reflection St. James wants us to see as well. If we are the image of Christ in the world, what is this image God sees within us? Who is this person, this true self? Surely that means that God sees someone who is a strong and brave defender and a gentle and generous carer. The world might see floppy arms and wobbly knees, but our loving Father sees kings and queens, brave knights, courageous warriors, iron men and iron women bravely diving into the darkest plates of the world and shining forth the clear light of the grace of the Lord Jesus. When we look into the mirror and see the image of Christ reflected back to us, what does this type of person do? Firstly, Our Father of Lights is sending down perfect gifts for us to make use of. In general terms, we can look to studying the Bible, prayer and the sacraments as core parts of our identity. And there are also other specific gifts, each reflecting something about the image of Christ. And these are for each of us to work out for ourselves. Start reflecting now on what gifts our Father has given you. Start nurturing those gifts now. And then look at how you can turn your gift from something you just hear about to actually doing it. Because it's a reflection of Christ that has been gifted to you. It's a blessing that God has intended for the world to receive through you. Secondly, we must all keep unstained by the world. That is, keep focused on this image of Christ within us and don't let any other image try and ruin it for us. Each of us has just had a week that's been chock full of opportunities to reflect Christ in the face of opposition. Pick the best one. That was your true self, the true image of Christ being reflected to the world. 
And if you want to be able to reflect Christ more clearly and more often, just ask our Father. The open hand of God's grace is always ready to give. Finally, and for me this is the most wonderful one, the Apostle encourages us to persevere. Keep looking to Jesus. Keep growing into his image. Start at the start with the reflection of Jesus that you're most drawn to. That's the image that you'll be best at reflecting. And then from there, keep growing as you reflect more and more of the image of Christ. The effort is worth it. God is bringing us into the perfect image of a perfect humanity, conformed to the image of Christ. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Amen.